Uh, magandang umaga, uh, Pilipinas. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you might be joining us, uh, wherever part of the world you might be. Um, my name is EJ David. I'm honored to be here with you all. It, it has been my dream for a while now to have Psikolohe Young Filipino and Filipino American Psychology come together. Um, so this is really dope. <laughs> uh, so maraming salamat, uh, pambansang samahan ng Psikolohe Young Filipino for inviting us to engage in this discussion. Um, by the way, happy 45th year. Uh, that's an amazing accomplishment. Congratulations. Uh, so as you can see, I am here to talk about the need for Filipino-American psychology. Uh, but before I do that, as I always do before every presentation that I do, I must first do some acknowledgments. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, my ancestors. I am Kapampangan, and I'm also uh, Tagalog on my mother's side. Um, so that's uh, who I, I, I must acknowledge, and you know that's who I come here with. Um, I also want to acknowledge my family. I'm uh, married to a Koyuko Natabascan woman, one of the indigenous groups here in Alaska, and together we have four children. Uh, their names are Malakas, Kalayaan, Kaluguran, and Tala. Um, and even though you don't see them here with me, uh, they are always with me. I am a reflection of my family. Um, and I also want to acknowledge the lands that I am on now. I am on the traditional lands of the Dena'ina people, otherwise known as Anchorage, Alaska. Um, it is here where I join you today, and it is here where I currently live and work. So I have about 10 minutes here with you, and I just would like to, to quickly share uh, why we felt uh, we needed a community, really a family, um, within American psychology. Um, actually, it's, it's uh, you know, even within uh, Asian American psychology. Um, Sheila, can we go on to slide two, please? Uh, here in the U.S., uh, when people think of Asian Americans, uh, people often think of uh, East Asians like Chinese, uh, Koreans, or Japanese, um, even media outlets who claim, you know, who, whose mission is to focus on Asian Americans, uh, they reflect this East Asian uh, bias. Uh, so for example, as you can see in this slide, I, I did a content analysis of, uh, you know, like a major a website that focuses on Asian Americans, a magazine that focuses on Asian Americans, um, a very influential paper in a very major city, and then a, a large uh, a media company um, that you know also focuses on Asian Americans. And as you can see in this graph, um, the content uh, for all four of these media outlets um, extend higher than the red line. The red line is the, the percentage of East of the Asian American groups, um, you know, the percentage that they compose of the Asian American population. So that's the red line. As you can see, the content for all of these four media outlets surpass that red line for Chinese, Koreans, and Japanese, um, you know, suggesting that stories about East Asians are disproportionately overrepresented uh, given their population size. However, the opposite is true for, uh, you know, what we call over here uh, in the United States as brown Asians, uh, Indians or South Asians, Filipinos um, and Vietnamese, you know, and as you can see right here, uh, you know, brown Asians are disproportionately underrepresented uh, consistently across the board. Um, and so, you know, this is an example of how, you know, there is an East Asian bias um, whenever we talk about Asian Americans. Um, another example, uh, Sheila, can you go on to the next slide too? Um, another example is a recent documentary uh, by PBS um, in the year 2020, uh, so very recently. Uh, it received a lot of funding and a lot of attention, and there is also an intentional attempt uh, from the producers, you know, from everybody involved in the in the documentary, um, to be more inclusive of you know Asian American groups to try to address this East. Asian bias. And so I also did a content analysis of this. And despite these attempts, right, uh, to, to, to get rid of the bias, the product still ended up showing East Asian bias, as you can see in this graph. Um, 
where you know like very little uh, was very little time was devoted to Filipinos and also South Asians, right? And and this forgetting of Filipino Americans isn't new. Um, Sheila, can we go on to the next slide, please? Um, you know, Fred Cordova and Dorothy Cordova, who founded the Filipino American National Historical Society here in the United States, uh, noticed this, you know, way back in 1980, in the 1980s, right? And when they published this, this book, um, and the title of the book is Filipinos, uh, Forgotten Asian Americans. Um, I think we're on that slide now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but again, this forgetting of Filipino Americans go even further back. You know, then 1980 it goes back to 1970, you know, when the whole Asian American um, movement was beginning. Um, Filipinos already noticed that they were being forgotten even within the Asian American umbrella. So, Sheila, um, can we go to the next slide, please? Um, so here you, we see that Filipinos back then, and this is uh, documented in uh, Joanne Rondilla's book, uh, uh, Pacific diaspora. Uh, they talked about how um, uh, Filipinos felt marginalized and, and forgotten even within the Asian American umbrella. And so they felt like they had to create the Brown Asian Caucus, right? This, this whole concept of Brown Asian was started in 1970. Um, and then more recently, uh, our dear friend, um, also, uh, you know, a prominent Filipino American psychologist, Dr. Kevin Nadal, uh, talked about the Brown Asian movement also because this issue is still happening today, right? So being understudied, being underserved, uh, being invisibilized or forgotten um, also extend to American psychology. So it's not just, you know, America in general, but American psychology in particular. So if we go to the next slide, Sheila, um, here's a tally of psychological literature about some of the bigger Asian ethnic groups in the U.S. Um, and again, this is only up to the year 2010. Um, but as you can see, uh, you know, the, the orange bars there is our percentage of the Asian American population. And the blue bars represent um, the percentage of Asian American psychology literature about those ethnic groups. And as you can see, oh, can we go back? Can we go back to the to the graph, to slide six? Sorry. Um, and then, uh, yeah. And as you can see right there, um, you know, again, Filipino Americans, even though we re represent about 20% of the Asian American population, only about 2% of Asian American psychology literature is focused on Filipino Americans, right? Um, and, you know, and that was my experience uh, when, when I started studying psychology here in the United States. Um, there were very few uh, Filipino-specific sp uh, literature um, that, that I could find, Filipino-American-specific literature that I could find. Um, you know, there were some pioneers, uh, the works of uh, Ping Serafica, um, Asuncion Austria, um, you know, Maria Root, especially Maria Root, uh, Linda Revilla, Lenny Strobel, of course, uh, Judy Pataxil, uh, Patricia Harris, um, you know, but many of them uh, are working as clinicians and they were not necessarily uh, producing, you know, a whole lot of, of literature. Uh, I found whatever the, the work that they were producing, though, very helpful uh, for my own development. Um, and then I found the Asian American Psychological Association, um, but even within that organization, there were very few uh, Filipinos in it. You know, there was Alvin Alvarez, um, and then Kevin uh, was Kevin Nadal was a grad grad student, just like I was back then, right? And so then, eventually, around 2010, um, the few of us who were parts of the Asian American Psychological Association, um, we decided that it was time to to create our own division. Um, so Sheila, can we go to the next slide now? Um, so, you know, we were tired of, of being forgotten. We were tired of, of feeling lonely, um, even within the Asian American community, um, even within Asian American psychology. Uh, we felt like uh, there was so much about the Filipino American experience uh, that can inform many of the important issues facing our country and really facing the world, um, like immigration, uh, racism, colonialism, um, indigeneity, you know, and the lack of attention on the Filipino American experience 
you know, really was like a disservice to the world community um, because, uh, you know, whatever solutions or answers we come up with for these issues is going to be incomplete and ineffective without the Filipino perspective. Uh, you know, so Filipinos must be part of the national or, or global conversations about these issues, um, given our experiences, right? And so then our, you know, the Filipino perspectives need to be part of our solutions for these issues. Um, and so, you know, that really contributed to why we um, uh, created uh, the division on Filipino Americans, DOFA, in 2010. You can see here an email. Uh, Kevin and I were, were, were looking through old emails. And it really just started, you know, with an email, for, you know, between uh, a few group of uh, a few people. Um, and, yeah, we just ran with it. Um, and we've come a long way since then. Uh, you know, there has been a steady growth uh, in Filipino American psych literature. Dr. Kevin Nadal published uh, the first book on Filipino American psychology. Um, and, you know, and then I published Brown Skin, White Minds. Um, we've had conferences and, and Alicia is going to talk about those. Um, we are now currently working on a special issue on Filipino American psychology within the Asian American Journal of Psychology. So that's the first um special issue on Filipino American psychology ever. Uh, so we've come a long way um, in our brief 10 year history. Um, however, uh, there's a lot more work uh, to be done. So um, can you go to the next slide there, Sheila, please? Um, so as you can see, as of today, I just did this, this analysis today. Um, you know, uh, Phil Am psychology literature still compose a disproportionately low percentage of the total Asian American psychological literature. Um, you know, and then, you know, so I did this today. My friend, Dr. Nadal also did a quick comparison of articles on Chinese versus Filipinos and some of the more well-known uh, journals publishing ethnic minority research. Um, so if you go to the next slide there, uh, you will see huge discrepancies between, you know, Chinese focused research and Filipino focused research, right? So we need more people uh, to focus their work on the Filipino American community. Um, there are still so many unanswered questions and unaddressed issues facing our community. So yeah, we need you. We need more people. Um, that's it. That's my piece. Thank you all so much for listening. <laughs>